13 Grotesque and Horrifying Monsters of Sweet Home Explained, an absolute underrated masterpiece that no one is talking about. Starring actors Song Kong, Lee Jin Wook, and Lee Si Young in the lead roles, Sweet Home is a post-apocalyptic horror series developed by Studio Dragon and adapted to Netflix from the Kin Carnby webtoon of the same name. Although most fans are sticking to their decision of preferring the webtoon over the Netflix series, they have reached a consensus about the stellar job done by the actors and writers. The 10-episode long season tells the story of a cynical high school student Cha Hyun Su, who gets trapped in the Green Roof Apartments building. While he's stuck there with others, monsters have taken over the rest of the world and seek to devour the remaining few. It soon boils down to survival of the fittest as more people are attacked and turn into monsters themselves. Interestingly, all the beasts are distortions and horrendous reflections of their own personalities and flaws. Today we're counting down our top picks of the monsters from Sweet Home. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Speed Monster the Speed Monster's identity before the monsterification is not known, but what we do know is that when he was human, his dream was to become a track and field star. In fact, he was willing to, and did, go to any lengths to reach his goal, even if that included murder. Usually, turning into a monster means the human gave up their free will altogether, but in the case of Speed, the human's sadistic nature only got amplified. With a tall, toned figure and a third eye in the middle of his forehead, the speed monster came across as one of the more menacing creatures. What made him stand out is his respect for a good competition, something he retained from his human self. Since he used his high speed to force his attacks better, the speed monster has a very small moment of weakness between attacks where he could be killed. His skin changed from gray to red whenever he was recovering from an attack, but if one missed the kill shot in that period, then good luck to them. Steroid Protein Monster This bizarre-looking monster's human identity was not known, but it is evident from his name and appearance that the human who transformed was tempted by super strength and a desire to bulk up. The monster always maintained a weird smile, except when it was enraged, in which case it turned into a frown. He was rightly named, as he sure did love his protein intake. Not only did he enjoy feasting on humans more than anything else, he also ate up other monsters if the need arose. Although Steroid was already huge enough to rattle up the whole place from afar, he had the ability to get even bigger and stronger when attacked. It seemed impossible to destroy the Steroid monster at first, but after taking some drastic measures, he was finally defeated by a half-monster. That is someone who can use their monster abilities at their will, but also keep their human selves. Blind Monster, Lotus Root Monster When one of the residents of Green Roof Apartments came face to face with someone going through a metamorphosis, she was saved by a stranger who cut half the monster's head off. This birthed the unnerving Blind Monster, who was unable to see due to the lack of an upper half of a head but had enhanced hearing and other senses which allowed it to navigate easily and attack those that came in its way. This monster was known for having spikes protruding out of his body that he used to climb walls and even attack his prey. Where his head was sliced off, one could see the inside of his face, but the clustered holes made it squeamish to look at, becoming a nightmare for anyone suffering from trypophobia, rightly giving it the name Lotus Root Monster. Before turning into an abomination, this guy was no less obsessed with killing. He was an alcoholic who hated his boss with a murderous rage. And although he was monster enough to survive with half a head, he had not fully changed at the time of his decapitation, hence being unable to regenerate. Giving the blind monster credit where it's due, his senses are so well trained that it is almost hard to tell if he really cannot see anything. But at the end of the day, he was blind and hit his fellow brethren. This unfortunately also led to his demise, when he made the mistake of bumping into the steroid monster. Yes, the one that eats others of its kind. Eyeball Monster From the lack of eyes to the abundance of the same, the eyeball monster's head was just giant deformed eyeballs on top of a humanoid body. 
As if this were not unnerving enough, the eyeball monster's wrinkly neck could stretch so high that he would be able to stand on the ground floor and say hello to the residents of the 14th floor of a building. This guy had gone through more transformations than most monsters, from being a monster to having his head cut off, resulting in the growing of all those eyeballs in place of a real head, to then evolving fully and going back to looking like a normal human but lacking any emotions or empathy altogether. Wise beyond his peers, the eyeball monster only got aggressive if he was attacked and was happy just looking in through the windows. But when provoked, he used his mouth to turn it into a sharp needle to stab others. Although it was never revealed what desire the human gave into to turn into this heinous monster, fans assume it was because the human was a voyeur who wished to peep into people's windows without their knowledge. Starving Monster when protagonist Hyun Cha's beautiful neighbor began turning into a monster, she exhibits signs of a bizarre eating disorder. This is thanks to the constant pressure of a strict diet that she had to face all her life as she wanted to become famous. Eventually, her innermost desire was to be able to eat whatever and however much she wants. When her monsterification began, she came to be known as the Starving Monster, as she ate anything with a pulse on it. Her life as a monster was short-lived as she accidentally plummets to her own death before her transformation is fully complete. Unable to manipulate Hyun into opening his door for her, she tried his upstairs neighbor, but none of her tricks worked. She heard a detective approaching, which made her nervous, and she jumped out of the 15th floor. Not being able to regenerate, her body lay there until one of the other monsters ate it, leaving behind no trace of her anymore. Tentacles Monster This monster walked on the tentacles protruding out of his back like a spider instead of using his two legs. Interestingly, it had enough weaknesses to balance out his strengths. Tentacles emerged out of the human's desire to get rid of all threats to his life. This caused him to mutate into a monster that was hard to fool or kill and who knew how to adapt well. Using his appendages the same way an octopus does, this monster could lift his prey and rip it to pieces. Unfortunately for him, he could not use one tentacle for more than one purpose at a time. The tentacle monster was always quick to learn from his mistakes to outsmart his opponent the next time. But he could not tell the difference between a corpse and a living human, which made it easy for one to toss a dead body at him for distraction while they ran away. Hyun and his group had to lure him away from themselves long enough for them to escape, but could not kill him. Years later, a group of criminals that took shelter in the apartment building unknowingly brought the tentacle monster out of hiding. This time, he was not able to protect himself the same way and got killed by one of the criminals. The Reach Monster Overcome by the guilt of not being able to save his son from the speed monster, this guy gave in to his monsterification and came to be called the Reach Monster. This weird-looking monstrosity not only had his clothes and shoes intact from when he was human, but also the backpack he wore right before he turned. The Reach Monster's arms were long and could stretch around a whole building block much like Helen Parr from The Incredibles. The reason for this was his inability to reach for his son before he was killed by a monster, and that guilt manifested into his ability when he turned into one himself. Given how the Reach monster did not have any physical strength that may prove fatal to others, the flexibility of his arms was the only way he could get to his victims. But the downside was although it could reach out and look for his prey, his arms did not have eyes and were hence vulnerable to attack from anyone who could spot a stray set of arms lurking around. Tongue Monster The Tongue Monster's identity was unknown, but that was one of the things that made it all the more menacing. This monster had a large forehead and glowing eyes, paired with a grotesque mouth that stretched open into its throat and chest. This opening revealed an elongated tongue that he used to attack. Given how he's called the Tongue Monster and used that part of him as the main weapon, his tongue is pretty strong and could knock out anyone standing in his way. He then used it in the same way that a mosquito does and sucked the insides of his victim till they were nothing but an empty shell of skin. The monster met his demise similar to how he devoured another one of his kind. Using smart tactics and strategic planning, protagonist Hyun was able to deflect the monster's tongue to another monster. He then went on to suck the insides of the other monster till he killed him. Later, the steroid monster came face to face with the tongue monster and ended up eating it. The Flyhead Monster 
This was one of the few monsters whose identity was known to us as we saw him go through his monsterification. Security guard at Green Roof Apartments, Mr. Kim, was constantly mistreated by his employers and worked in terrible conditions to make a living. He would have turned into a monster much sooner had one of the building tenants not snapped him out of it unknowingly. All this mistreatment, cruelty, and emotional abuse led Mr. Kim to become a monster that is fueled solely by vengeance and wished to pay back every single one of those who wronged him. In fact, as a monster, he loved to narrate exactly why he was killing someone right before he absorbed them. Unlike most monsters, the flyhead monster did not mutate or look ghastly, except for when he was enraged and his skin turned red. Most of the time, he looked like any normal human but with an emotionless face. His abilities were also quite sophisticated as he was able to absorb every victim he devoured, giving him a sturdiness that was almost impossible to shake. Not only this, but he had a sense of when one is undergoing monsterification and would not attack that person. The flyhead monster was the one who gets sucked by the tongue monster thanks to Hyun's witty plan. The Infant Monster Unlike the name suggests, the infant monster was an adult woman and not a random fetus floating around. Before turning, her name was Myung Ja Lim and she was also a resident of Green Roof Apartments. Having lost her baby, she was vulnerable to monsterification, but her strong will allowed her to remain half-monster for a while. Later, she went into a cocoon, as some monsters did, to reach final stages of evolution. Myung Ja's monster self looked like an upside-down fetus in a mother's womb, whereas her human self was a young woman with brown shoulder-length hair. After bickering and fighting off her monster self several times, she finally reached a compromise where she could be herself as well as the monster, and hence, in some weird way, she had another baby to mother, that baby being the infant monster. Since this beast was mostly wrapped up in personal matters, it was practically harmless. This, along with the residents' liking for Myung, caused them to leave her alone and not kill her. However, when she turned into a cocoon, the residents became confused and believed she might turn into a possible threat. When they attacked the resting cocoon, it angered all the other monsters and they raided the apartment building. This is because all creatures are aimed at protecting those going through their transformation. Slime Monster Perhaps one of the more tragic origin stories, the slime monster was a mere boy named Min, who gave in to his monsterification after he saw his mother getting killed by the blind monster. Scared for his life, his strongest desire was not to be spotted by any other monster, and this turned him into a translucent slimy liquid with two eyeballs. Although the slime monster's preferred approach to any fight was to run away, it had some abilities that it used as a last resort. It could enter through openings or cracks that any liquid can, surround its victim with its body to drown them, and even enter a dead body to wear it as a human suit. Unlike the others, this monster was open to reasoning, given how it was a little boy after all. But none of that mattered as Jun Shin, leader of the criminals who later took refuge in Green Roof Apartments, ordered his men to kill the slime monster anyway. The Hair Monster Named Suk Kim, this middle-aged, bald man was abusive towards his wife and hit almost all the general criteria of being a terrible person. He was rude to everyone he met, had a deep inferiority complex fueling his need for approval, and was extremely stubborn. He had a brief period of remorse while he was going through his transformation when he decided he wants to be a better person, but that ended as soon as his monsterification was complete. Suk's wife Sun An had long waited to get her revenge for the years of torture he put her through, but seeing as she herself had started undergoing monsterification, her plans had to take a back seat. An was determined to not turn fully before she kills Suk, as she wanted to get her revenge while she was still human. When faced with what he was and what he put people through, Suk was able to regain a moment's humanity and he allowed her to kill him and get the payback she deserved. The Control Monster Last but not least is the protagonist and the epicenter of Sweet Home, Hyun Cha, who got infected but fought back. His will was so strong that he was able to remain a half-monster, using his monster abilities whenever needed to fight the others. Eventually, Hyun was able to fully evolve, but unlike most evolved monsters, did not remain fully emotionless. This level of resilience earned him the name of the Control Monster. After being bullied for years, Hyun deteriorated in school and studies, leading him to becoming more distant from his family and eventually suicidal. 
When he was stuck in green roof apartments with the other survivors, Hewn emerged somewhat as a hero as he bravely fought off all the monsters and even killed two of them. If you guys enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe, and press that bell icon that will help you get notifications. We upload an awesome video every day! Have an amazing day ahead and stay safe!